Hello, my brothers and sisters on the Dragon's Path. My name is Tim Hay and I believe in dragons and I love this forest. I love this forest so much and I love my dragons. I love the dragons so much. But why? How come that we love the dragons so much? Why? What is actually the secret why we love dragons so much? I mean, why not a dinosaur? Why not something else? Why do we love dragons so much and why it's so easy? that we are triggered by a simple image of the dragon. If we see the dragon's image, for example, in, in movies or somewhere else, um, then it, the, the chance is very great that we will have our awakening. Because this awakening triggers us and opens up the dragon gate for the other dragons, for your dragons to come to you. But why? I mean, how come that we actually are triggered so easily? That is because we, my brothers and sisters, have an energy and this energy inside of us is draconic and this draconic is still asleep but even in this in he in his sleep sleeping state he's still dreaming he's still doing something and when you are your dragon is trying to reach out for you your dragon energy your dragon energy will have something in their dream when you see a dragon image you will immediately be triggered by it because you know the image and the image for you is so beautiful and so good it feels so good that you will be able to trigger your uh, that um, the image of course will be able to trigger yourself because you are a child of the dragon and the child of the dragon just needs doesn't need much it doesn't need much i mean it's just the same reason why we love nature so much why do we love trees i mean it's a tree why do we love it because we are children of nature we are ch children of the elements, and so we are children as well as the, uh, the dragon's child that we are. So yeah, and that is actually uh, something that humans actually don't understand. Humans, most of the time, when they, are, when they are not on the dragon's path, they believe that they rule over everything, and they they don't just they don't ask questions for themselves. The dragon child always asks questions for themselves: What is going on? What should I do? And things like that. Um, as a dragon child, you should just let every day go by, I mean, with your feelings and instincts that you have. And so your feelings and instincts just say the same thing. When you are uh, seeing an image of the dragon, for example, that is just the same thing. Um, it's your feelings and instincts that are speaking to you. It's your draconic instincts and, and that, that are speaking to you. And that is very beautiful. That is so amazing when, when this happens. I mean, it's the emotions are so large and so chaotic that it's yeah out of this chaos you have to create your own path this will be your dragon's path and you will have to create it yourself wherever the dragon is going you will follow it and this will be your path no one else is going to say where your path is going this is uh, something that you will have to do for yourself alongside with your dragons in your dragon eye your dragon circle <sighs> and that is why we are triggered so easily by a dragon's image. Why, why are people not triggered by any image of something else? I mean, if, if you see an image of, for example, Jesus or something like that, people are not triggered by that. People are most, most of the time fearing this or adoring this because of what they are going to get. But this dragon, you never actually understood. I mean, you never it was never said to you what the dragon is going to do for you or going to do to you. I mean, you don't know anything about the dragon. Yet, you are triggered so easily. I mean, the Jesus figure was, was easily triggered because of his promises and threats. If you don't follow it, then people will say, Ah, oh, yeah, Jesus is love. But why do you do this for the dragon? You don't know anything about the dragon. Or, don't you? I mean, you are knowing actually a lot about the dragon, but you still don't realize it. Everything that you discover f from the dragon is because you still remember it somewhere. It's going to, um, this, this trigger is going to awaken also a lot of questions that you can have. In the dragon's path, every path, uh, every step that you take is something that you understand just a little bit more. It's just a something that you understand more. That is how closer that you get to the dragon's realms, the more that you understand about the dragon. The, because you want to understand it. And that is what I'll, I cannot explain to people outside of the path. I, can't, I just cannot. Because this has to be something that you have to feel. Something that has to be felt. It's so beautiful actually that it, you cannot explain this. The love for the dragon. You cannot explain 
how the dragon i mean uh, if you if you look at an image of the dragon how what what you feel you can just cannot explain that it's like you see something that is very very familiar and very very beautiful so like i said you can just cannot explain that so i don't bother to explain that but i would love to explain this to those who, to, who feel the same to my brothers and sisters on the dragon's path it's something that needs to be felt so because you are a child of the dragon and a child of the dragon that is still asleep and so one of the dragon gods that just uh, awakened you and your dragon guardian as well and that is where your dragon eye stands for your dragon eye um, is actually the, the sign of the child that is still here on this earth alone actually <laughs> not really alone i mean but yeah like i said the dragon the dragon is just an, uh, a spirit here a spirit they cannot be physical like you are they are your guardian angels your guardian dragons you can say they have the face of nature itself I mean, they are created after the image of the God. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I laugh with this, but it's actually it's true. The image of nature, the image of God is the image of the dragon. That is why they have a crown. That is why they have a cape. That is why they have everything that nature has to offer. Claws, uh, uh, wings uh, sometimes, um, uh, and horns. It's all given by nature. They are the perfect being. Why? Because nature is the dragon. Favnir is fire. Leviathan is water. Quetzalcoatl is air. And Pango and Tiamat are the earth. And so they are all dragons. Uh, so, and like I said, um, the image, uh, uh, I mean, oh, I want to show you. Um, the dragon's eye, for example. The dragon's eye is a very important part of our path. The dragon's eye is um, the triangle. The dragon's eye is actually what it's showing. It's, it's our, it's our um, image of the dragon that hold each other's hand. So uh, three corners and the underneath is us. And the other corners are your other dragons from two different kind of dimensions. In the middle of it, it's your eye. It's your same power, it's the same energy. One with the dragon and one with nature. So yeah, so we are actually the children. No one else is allowed inside of this eye. And we all have our different kind of eye, but we all have a dragon's eye. And so if we can still see through the eyes of the dragon in this world, even though the dragon is not uh, here anymore in a physical way, but they can be here in a, in a spiritual way. And the reason why is you, because you are still a child of the dragon. Actually, they are the great manipulators of, of the elements itself, because you are still um, uh, this. Uh, you are still here. I mean, the, so with, because of you, the dragon is still here on this place and they can still see everything what is going on in this place. You are their key. You are their energy. And so because of you, um, the dragon can be with you as well, even though it's actually not allowed. But the dragon is doing it so because they have a lot of power. They have a lot of energy and they will use the, the energy to manipulate it wherever it's needed. And it's very beautiful actually to know that you are a child of the dragon and this child is very loved. You don't understand me wrong, the dragon can be sometimes a little bit dark and they can be strict, but in the end they love you so much. I mean, I know that my dragon god and my guardian, they would die again once just for me and you would do the same for the dragon. And that is where pure love comes from. I mean, this... this uh, if I compare this with the religions of today, the they will just go, go to church just without thinking because it's tradition and it will happen. But um, true love for a spiritual guardian, that then you need to go to the dragon, then you need to step in the dragon's eye. You, you will understand what spiritual love means. Then you don't need hell or heaven, no threats or no treats. You don't need this on the dragon's eye, on the dragon's path. You just need one simple trigger to be awakened. I mean, I try to make them understand that I don't need priests and I don't need everything. I mean, I just follow my path and I just listen to the dragon. 
I mean, why do people always need these priests and always need these threats? Uh, I, I mean, this Jesus figure is a human. Why do, does it always have to be a human? I mean, we are not gods. Humans are not gods. Why should humanity think that humans control everything, that they are made after the image of God? I mean, how is that? Because I don't see anything beautiful about a human. I only see destruction and I only see a bad spirit that should be a guardian but is not. So why do they believe that they rule over everything? I don't know. When, when you see and look through the dragon's eyes, when humans behavior, when they do something, sometimes it seems odd. And sometimes it just seems plain wrong what they are doing. And so sometimes it's just strange in this environment that they live in, that they go to uh, go together to shop and things like that. I go to the forest and here is no one. I'm being here alone with the dragon, having a conversation with each other while everyone else today, I mean, it's the 1st of January and every, uh, everywhere else, uh, have got, people want to come together even though it's COVID-19 times. Um, they want to go together, but I just prefer to stay here all alone in the snow, in the middle of a forest. Just to be alone, out of this human traffic. I mean, I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Um, that a dragon doesn't seem it's itself as well as the most number one being. But the problem is that humans see it, that they are, but they are not. Just as small as they are when something like COVID-19 is happening. Just a little, a little thing. And what and probably will happen again in, in years that, that come. So yeah, my brothers and sisters, it's actually... <coughs> <clears throat> it's actually something uh, um, very, very interesting to know that we just don't need that. We just we are children of, of the dragon and children of the dragon just need the image of the dragon to be awakened, to know what they are, to feel what they are. It's so easy, actually. But we live in a society that doesn't make it easy. Follow your heart and instincts and everything that you uh, feel for the dragon. Just open it up and let it, let it explode. And so we'll awaken your soul. My brothers and sisters, be blessed.